so i did even uh, interest related uh, setups on saturday but uh, we failed to see the result because due to performance issue it immediately didn't show uh, the interest is not created and uh, even interest invoice is not created let me start from there okay so i'm starting with interest creation part again uh, interest invoice related topic so from financials, uh, the interest related setup, what you're going to do is you are going to see from the manage invoice options from the payable financial offering. Okay, so here uh, we have the option to, uh, if you want to enable the interest functionality, you have to just enable the create interest invoices option and you have to give the minimum interest amount and interest allocation method you want to go with single distribution or at all invoice lines. So I just selected with all invoice things. And this is the interest expense uh, distribution combination I have given, okay? And after this, we have uh, created the interest rates. Okay. Uh, so manage interest rates for payables. So it is like uh, here actually, uh, this functionality you won't use in real time. Uh, but uh, why it is because if you can see, uh, we can just create the interest rates for a uh, duration of certain period with some percentage. But this want to use like for the, uh, each supplier is calculating uh, the different interest rates. So supplier specific you just cannot create. You can just create. Uh, only with the percentage for a uh, particular duration okay for example if you are making the payment uh, after the due date certain supplies may charge two percent uh, certain supplies may charge one percent or five percent right so those kind of things you just cannot segregate with the supplier level and after this this is at the bu level uh the system level and then uh, at the supplier site level even you can just uh, uh, take the decision whether for that supplier you want the interest functionality should be enabled or not. Like you will have the yes no option and also uh, default from the payable options. Okay, those are the options we have. Then uh, let's log in with the user. So those are the setups we did. And after that, I even created the invoice with uh, older dates. Like I created the invoice, I think, from uh, some date of Jan period. Then uh, I made the payment even. I tried to make the payment, I didn't save it, but it didn't calculate the interest. So that day we thought actually it is because of some uh, performance issue. I'm just navigating, I'm just trying to search that invoice. Once we search the invoice, uh, we'll make the payment. And we'll see whether the interest is calculating or not. So I actually didn't calculate the interest. No, and I want to search with supplier. Hello everyone. Hi Martin. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi Rajneesh. Hi Navin, good morning. What is that invoice number I created? Uh, for, okay. I didn't remember the invoice, not a problem. Let me quickly create an invoice with older date and we'll see uh, where interest is calculating or not, or Mr. Nasseta. Fine. So let's select the business unit. Hello, Rajneesh. Hi, Navin. Hi, Balu. Hey, Karthik. Good morning. Good morning, Navin. Yeah, good morning, Navin. Hey, hi. Hi. So I'm creating with. Uh, Five zero four. So 
in ind just for in. so thousand is amount this dollars payment currency Has anyone tried uh, with interest is calculated for the invoice which you created on Saturday? Forgot the invoice number. Oh, no. you, you need to change the date. I'm changing, yes. Bring okay. Feb first. Okay, however, uh, so my term date is based on the invoice date I'm thinking, so that's it defaulted. So accounting date also we will make it to invoice date itself, so that it is. Let me just see the distributions information once. Okay, two one twenty. Fine. Save it and close. Save it. Validate. Okay. Feb is our prayer period. We never create any transaction, but still system allowed us to validate this one. Can anyone tell why? And even the supplier is having prepayment invoice. I can so this prepayment notification, Homshi, enable the checkbox of uh, show available prepayments to the supplier. So you'll get this prepayment application. And the prepayment is there here. And so, post to let you. So in the prior periods, even you are able to validate and do the accounting because when that Feb period even it is open. We open directly from Jan to uh, April, all the periods, right? That's the reason it is showing. So we have taken payment terms is amazing than 30 days. So uh, 30 net. So 2120 means uh, by 1st May we have, sorry, by 1st March we have to make the payment, but now it is 4th of May. It's validated, accounted and save it and close. Okay, then create payment. Select the business unit here. So once you here you can see once you select the Cisco 20 supplier, uh, the payee will be furniture world supply because I, we, we define the third party payment relationship with this supplier. Okay. This is the payment process profile. Remit to okay. the bank account still is not appearing. Very right? fine. Hmm. Invoices to pay select, and this was the invoice. Hmm. I think. Okay. Apply. And then click on OK. Okay. 
Okay. Interest is not still calculating. No other reason. Okay. It's still not working. Mm -hmm. This quantity is fine, but interest it should calculate. I don't know the reason still uh, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Actually, you should not have any problem whether it, uh, if you have any third party supplier relationship event, the interest should be calculated. You just check uh, what option I have selected for the supplier for the interest. Create interest invoice default payable op for default for payable options and will be selected. There is nothing wrong with this. Let me delete. We don't have a remove option, then I can update this one. Hmm. Okay, so I think we can only end it. We can't uh, remove then. Let me just end it with that date. Or uh, let me just select as yes option because we tried with payables default but it didn't pick so let me just select as yes and see this stuff. It should work either, uh, with that option even but let's see. Okay, let me just recreate the payment and see. So we indicated now it is not coming, so pay will be the supplier itself. Hmm.
So suppose remit to account it is coming when you are selecting the payment process profile with uh, electronic. Hmm. Sorry, this video is okay. So I created two payment process profile. One is with check. So for the check, it didn't show the remit to account, which is suppose one. It's coming only with uh, electronic pay payment type. It is not applying, but uh, this is the process that the setup actually we just need to do. Uh, it will work sometimes uh, in demo instances. We will not see this kind of behavior, but when you're practicing, just see uh, if it's working fine. So once it uh, interest is calculated for that interest amount, even the interest invoice even it will create. Okay. So some other time when we see again in the next one week if it is working then definitely i will show you once again okay so this is about the interest invoice part I'm just cancel this one we can use this invoice for some other uh, scenario so now let's discuss about uh, this payable process so we have one more kind of payment that is uh, bills payable uh, payment so if you want to do the bills payable payment, we need to do certain uh, configurations. First we'll do that and then we'll see how this bills payable will work. So bills payable is nothing but uh, So there's no much configuration we are just going to do while uh, creating the payment method itself. We are going to enable the bills payable checkbox. Okay, that is the one setup we have to do. And bills payable is nothing but it is like once you make the payment today also, uh, like by what date supplier can claim that uh, check. So that you are going to give some uh, certain number of days or a specific date you are going to give while making the payment. So supplier cannot claim the check uh, till that uh, date reached. Okay, so that's that is a bills payable configuration topic. So provide bills payable account in common options for payables and procurement. So this is the one thing we have to map, and then uh, you have to create a payment method for bills payable. So what is the payment method you are creating? Like EFT or the check. For that payment method, you have to enable the bills payable checkbox and then we'll create one standard invoice and we'll make the payment with future date. It means till that date, uh, supplier cannot uh, claim his check. So this you will use for different uh, reasons like uh, if the treasury team uh, wants to uh, see about the funds and there are having some limited funds so in future uh, days if they want to do that they want to proceed then they can use this uh, bills payable configuration concept okay so here under manage common options for payables and procurement we map this bills payable account let me refresh Okay, so this is the account we are going to use uh, C 21070 bills payable account. We must need to map if you want to use the bills payable feature. And then from the payments functional area, uh, while creating the payment methods from manage payment methods task, you can create a new payment method or you can use even the existing payment method. But for the bills payable, I'm just going to create a new payment method and here under the bills payable section we are going to enable the bills payable checkbox fine so i'm just giving amd under
So I'm going to give uh, usage rules, validation, and everything remains same. I'm not going to do anything with specific. I'm going with all business units, all legal entities, and all payment process transaction in receivables and payables everything. So validations and also this check I'm going to use for payables, receivables and cash management. And under the validations, I'm not going to give any validations here. So let's go with the bills payable. And here you need to enable this uh, bills payable checkbox. Okay. So this payment method you can use only if you want to uh, make the payment uh, with a future date. With the future data payments if you want to do then you must need to use only this uh, payment method which is enable the bills payable checkbox okay and additional information that's ignorable just ignore it and save it and save and close okay so that's it this is the setup we can do for bills payable so let's navigate to invoice for the existing invoice, the new configurations will not work. That's the reason I'm creating the new invoice. Okay. The invoice which we just created for uh, to see interest calculation. If I use that one, system will not allow me to use because that invoice is created prior to the setup. Okay. So any testing what you're doing, uh, that will work only. Uh, after the configuration created if you create I'm giving 0, 05 0, 04 and give some why or interest is not okay. So to everyone, we just uh, disabled, uh, we given end date, right? To a third party supplier, you can see. Now the third party supplier is, is not appearing here. Earlier we got one more field here additionally added where we can see the third party supplier. As we end dated, it, it's not appearing now. So whatever the payments are uh, going to do, that is for Cisco supplier itself. So let's valid it. So underscore BP is the uh, uh, invoice. So bills payable payments is nothing but future data payments. You are going to specify on which date a uh, supplier can go and in cash is check. Even though if you are making a payment today, whatever the date you are mentioning, you are specifying for so under date itself, supplier can cash that amount. One minute. We need to change that. Uh, payment method for the sub invoice it was with AMG EFT was there we just change it to the new payment method which we created mm -hmm. okay this is pay group
Okay. If you're using AMG check, then if you're searching for that invoice, that invoice will not be appear because that is with bills payable payment method. Then go with the payment process profile. Hmm. Even for this, it is working. Okay. Hmm. Invoice is not appearing. Invoice is not appearing with bills payable payment method. And done here and then go to your payment process profile. Payment methods for giving all not restricting with any. You have not post to GS. Well, posting is different. If it is validated, you can make the payment for that. Uh, posting, you cannot post even uh, your payment entry if you won't post your invoice. I mean the invoice. Ah, that's what I'm saying. Posting is not a dependency. If you won't post your invoice entry, you can't post your uh, payment entry. But for the validated invoices, can be paid. Accounting definitely it will not an issue. Let's take a minute. Collecting all actually it should work. Why that invoice is not still available for payment? This moment. For electronic payment method, 
Martin, it's like if you want to uh, do the accounting for your invoice, till you can make the payment, that's not a problem. But the system will not allow you to do the accounting for your payment event till you account your invoice. Is it because after we validated, we change the payment method? Is the reason or what?
It is not picking still. It should pick actually. There is no other setup required for this uh, for bills payable. value is not a number. immediate payment term and it's validated so it should available for the payment definitely There's nothing much to even troubleshoot. Enable for use in payables. And we enable the first payable check. Five decimal days. So here it is like if you want to give uh, the number of maturity date override you can just give the date if you won't give even here you can just specify the date while making the payment itself there is another option we have but this is all just check whether with any other payment this invoice is Hmm. It's not a double thing today. Bad money.
you know for all the payment process profile the remit of account is coming last week it didn't come and we will be fine no our invoices are not visible in the payment screen at all until the invoice it picked so why this invoice and it is not picking uh -huh. mm -hmm. we didn't change the payment currency for the latest invoice hmm. Yes. Sorry. This is payment method. For this, the payment method is GVP. Very sorry, I wasted your time. Can you change this? If you want to change, then fine. Now we can make the payment. Oh, wait. Ladies, I'm selecting the payment method of AMG bills payable check. Payment currency is CVP. Select invoices to pay. So, this is the invoice. Well, sorry, actually, there is no setup change required but the payment currency was CVP that's when it didn't default it didn't available when you search with USD okay but still let's see uh, if you are trying to save and create another if you click on save and close system should not allow us to Save and close, or as we given the number of maturity over right uh, is a five days. So if you save and close, it may save it. But if you see here in the advanced tab, if you won't give the number of days there, then uh, this field will become enable, and here you are going to give the maturity date. So today is the fourth of May, right? And we have given number of maturity over right days is five days. So it is giving 9th of May is your maturity date. So till this date, so if you send the check to supplier even, he can't encash that check till 9th of May. Okay. And this conversion is for because we are doing with the cross currency payment. And these are working conversion rates and conversion rate that what we used. So under the bills payable section, you can see this pay, uh, payment method what you use is bills payable. Yes. If you uh, do it with uh, electronic or AMG check, then it will not be S, yes, it will be with no. And you can see the maturity conversion date and conversion date type. And that date, what will be the conversion rate? And this is the maturity date. In this information you can see for bills payable. Clear? Martin, Balu, Karthik. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I think we even didn't account at this invoice. So, seven plus. So, as we have less time, so what we can do is, uh, okay, so if you're okay for another half an hour, then I will go with the shared service concept. This we can easily complete in a, a half an hour time. So the, the shared service concept we discussed uh, many times. Like if you have multiple business units, you can just keep any one of the business unit as a shared service center BU. And that business unit is going to make the payment on of all other invoices which you're having. So what you're going to do is like for all other business units, you're just going to enable the invoice function and you are not going to enable the payment function. So BU1 itself, you're going to enable the payments function and then for each of these business unit, you're going to define the relationship between, or you're going to define the relationship with BU1 business unit. 
So in EBS, by using actually uh, seven process request, we used to achieve this one. But now by having this shared service concept, even with the quick payments, also you can uh, make the payments of other business unit invoices. Okay. So very less setup we require. Uh, uh, we'll try to complete this one. Today. So just give me a minute. So what are the setups we require for this is? Okay. So we have to create a new business unit to say this one. At least we should have minimum two business units to test this scenario. We have already uh, under one and those business units should be under one uh, under the same ledger. Even though if it is under the same legal entity or across the legal entity, but those should be under the same ledger, then only this concept will work. So now under US primary ledger, we have two legal entities and each legal entity have one respective business unit, right? So US infra and US retail BU we are having. So for US infra BU already we have seen uh, invoice creation and the payment creation. So for retail BU, we will enable only the invoice functionality and we won't enable the uh, payments functionality, fine. So create business unit two, and in the business unit two, enable only uh, invoice and any other functions except payment function to test this scenario. Okay. Then you have to enable the manage service provider service relationship. Then create the transaction user, the same user we are going to use, and then we'll assign the roles. So roles also will be, uh, be there. We just need to provide the retail uh, business unit access to this user. And then to that user, we have to provide uh, define as a procurement agent for that business unit even so that we can have the supplier to that business unit. And yeah, so we'll see up to here. So it is like uh, you can create a new supplier or others to the existing supplier itself. You can create you can create a new site and that site you can uh, assign it to a new business unit. Okay. So any one of that way you can test this scenario. And so manage common options of payments and procurement. This is the only one setup you need to do. Other than this uh, invoice options and payment options is optional and payment options. However, it's not required. You are not going to make the payment by using that. So we are going to create the invoice by using business unit two and we'll make the payment from business unit one. The first step, uh, create a business unit. We already have the business unit. So we need to create the business unit, but we just need to make sure uh, that business unit doesn't have the payments function enabled. Okay. So from the scope, I'm just changing to infra BU. Is existing is infra BU, so let's go to retail BU. Okay. So for this retail BU, payables invoicing uh, function is enabled, so we can make the uh, we can create the invoices. But I just want to disable the payables payment function. Okay. So from this business unit, you can create the requisitions, procure, you can procure the goods, you can perform material management, all other models, business functions you can perform, except payments. Okay. So save it and close. Now go to all tasks because service relationship is an optional task. So here you can see you have to make sure the scope should be uh, US retail services be because from the for this business unit, you are going to define the relationship with another business unit, which is having the payments functions enabled. So the payables payment service provider, you go for search, you will get only one business unit, which is under the same ledger that is US infra BU. Click on apply and then click on that. Okay, that's it. Save it and close. So this is what the relationship we did. So creation of transaction user, we are going to use Jola 99 itself and that user already having the payables related roles. So to those roles, we have to now give uh, retail services BU access. So navigate to users and security functional area. Go to all tasks, data access for users. 
to add dollar ninety nine accounts payable specialist business unit. So US infra B U already is having so UK little B I will just give. And I don't think payables manager is required. Get the invoices, specialist and the supervisors are sufficient. So those two roles only we will give. And done. Just let's run once uh, process. Okay. We assign the roles and we assign the business unit access to the user. Then you have to assign this user as a procurement agent because for the business unit two, that is for the retail services BU also if you want to create the invoice, you should have the supplier, right? To uh, and I said the one who can create the supplier or uh, who is designated as a procurement agent, right? So from the scope, you need to attend that. Apply and go to task. Select retail services BU. Save it and close. So, Jola 99, I'm making her also as a procurement agent for retail services BU. So, here, if you want to select the business unit of procurement uh, business function, then your BU will not be up appear here. It's appearing because enable the procurement business function for this user. Okay. Manage appears, the checkbox cloud is enabled. This save it and close. Okay. So now if you navigate to your okay, good. Sorry, so here I just want to show you one more difference that the payment number 108, uh, which is created for the bills payable. You see here, uh, till now, whatever the payments we made, uh, the status of the payment is negotiable, right? But uh, for the bills payable payment method, uh, the payment which you use which you created by using the bills payable payment method, the status will be uh, issued. It will it, the status will be issued. Okay, so this will change to negotiable only after the five days. Uh, that is on 9th of May. When it is negotiable, then only uh, supplier can incur the check. Fine. But accounting entry, you can see. I'm just going to even post a ledger. But this we can't do, I think, because invoice is not created. Invoice is not accounted, I'm thinking. So let's see. Hmm. Sure. Okay. So once invoice accounting, we'll just come back and see once again. So let's click on done for the time being. Now, let's navigate to invoices. Okay, we are here itself, right? So let me just post to ledger. Accounting is done. So we can do this switch. So that we can even see the accounting entry for this. Manage payments. Right.
corresponding current create for entry second lecture are reporting currency why this line cannot be accounted until the accounting event for the application payable that reference fully accounted so there is something failure at our uh, invoice level uh, which is not accounted i'm thinking fine we can do that it is accounted right so why it didn't give yes mm, yes to cad it is even done might be prior completion of this we attempted okay we'll see this okay. so now what we're going to do is uh, as part of the shared service concept uh, we define your an entity as a procurement agent even for retail service sbu so you can test this scenario by creating entirely a new supplier or to the existing supplier itself you can assign that retail service sbu and you can test so how do you want me to go will create a new supplier for that bu or to the existing supplier will create a will assign that retail service as uh, bu existing martin you can use existing existing one yeah okay so it is very simple uh want to create new supplier even you can just create the same way how we created and we have seen the uh, site level we just selected uh, this business unit right amazon 19 us infra b so once you create the profile and address for the new supplier uh, here at the site level so this is code 20 supplier itself i'm just going to add one more site okay so this is supplier i'm going to assign a site called retail service b which we just enable okay so both are in the same location so the same address i'm just going to use and save it so all are uh, just defaulting options so i'm not going to make any changes i'm just going to add the view so last time we have seen from auto create assignment right so i'm just going to give this time manually yes retail services view that will be default to your and here this all i'm not giving because we're just going to give only one single invoice so save it and close Hi. okay so now the supplier is having two sites so by using retail services bu you will create an invoice for that bu as we just enable the invoice function invoice function so let's see whether can we make the payment by for the same business unit we didn't enable uh, we didn't define a bank account by using the business unit and also we didn't define the payment process profile by using the business unit so let's see uh, payables invoices now i'm creating an invoice go for business unit hmm? Right level, it will enable this for ordering. Okay. 
Hmm. US retails BU and supplier is same supplier we are using, but only the site is going to be different. Okay, even the site also it is same, but you can see the legal entity is changed to retail carefully. So I'll say zero five zero four let's go shared service center. If we didn't make any options even defaulted, right? So I'm just going to use this USD itself. So here I said one more, the one mandatory setup we must need to do is manage common options of payables and procurement. Even though I didn't show you, but this setup, uh, what are the mandatory accounts we required for that? This is defined already with the uh, tapid spreadsheet. Okay. So what are the mandatory accounts like liability, prepayment, discount taken, are you a conversion rate, variance gain and loss and Realize gain and distribution, everything is defined, so no need to worry about it. Okay, so we didn't uh, select any defaulting options for invoice options, that is the reason nothing is defaulted. I'm selecting everything manually from the invoice. Okay. So for this business unit, I think payable payment terms, even we didn't select uh, the one which we created our own. Uh, it was with I think uh, common so that's the reason all these payment terms are visible here for this business unit okay, all these payment terms are associated with the common reference data set okay. save it and close so, on these lines and the line amount so we don't have even the distribution set so let's enter the distribution combination manually here. So USA Little Corp Limited 399. Sign up business. H for select account. That's it. Uh, we're done with invoice data entry. But for this BU, did we open the PDFs? I think the PDF might be open definitely. Hmm. The invoice has the same subject. It's just giving a uh, pop up to warn you that you are create. You might creating a duplicate invoice. Validate. Okay, we validated. Fine. So we created a business unit for this uh, US retail service SBU. See your payment screen. Go to payables and payments. Under the payments work area, the retail services business unit will not appear itself to process the payment by using that way. See? Task panel. Select the create payment task. So, how was your weekend? Sunday? You can see we are not able to see US retail services be under the payments work area at all because we didn't enable the payment function. Clear? So why then Amazon 19 US infra BU is coming? Because 
for that retail services be we have defined this is the payment business unit the relationship okay if you won't define that relationship then even though this supplier is having this business unit access when you're searching for that particular invoice you cannot get that invoice fine so now as we enable the relationship between these two business units so whatever the invoice i created under retail services bu that i should be able to see from here and i should be able to make the payment as we use the same supplier the site is different so we have to select the site manually because you have the invoices for us infra bu and also the now retail bu right so that's the reason you have to select the site mm -hmm. Okay, if it's not picking, we'll just uh, change the payment method of the invoice level that you will not require. You can see 0504 underscore SSC is invoice number for the business unit of US retail services PU. So the same concept what we used to achieve by using the PPR in the EPS, now you can even achieve by using the quick payment method. And also additionally, even though which you used to achieve in the PPR, uh, in EPS by using PPR, it's like the other business units, they can make payment even for, the, uh, for their invoices even. But here you can even restrict like which business unit can only create invoices and which business unit can create invoices and payments both and also it is like if you're having total uh, five business units and if you want to create a separate shared service business unit that business unit you are going to use only for the processing the payments okay by using the uh, BU you won't even create the invoices so it means a dedicated BU you are going to use for just for processing the payments so the different scenarios you have Select. Apply and okay. Fine, so this is your air service center. And so you can see. This is not the payables, uh, bills payable check, uh, check we used, the payment method. You can see it is no. And also we created with the same uh, BU currency, that is RJ currency, that's within there is no conversion rate even. Just select the account and post ledger and save it and close. So the event accounting will be happen. Martin, payment failed. Payment amount is incorrect. Come on. The payment amount, what if this is incorrect? Thousand is unpaid, unpaid amount, amount is payment and thousand. It should be. I think it's giving the same error again. Payable failed because it is it's parent payment failed. What the option it is? Why it is the payment amount is incorrect? Mm -hmm. 
okay so there is some issue we are having but you can see the other business unit uh, invoices you can pick there is no problem in that and why this payment function is there which cancel uh, so the error which is coming that is related to something else but uh, your shared service concept will work in this so we are seeing multiple errors So in most of the uh, demo environments, you will see these kind of errors, uh, but don't surprise me that. The same tasks, the same setups, it will work. But in the LDM environments, you won't see this kind of error. Invoice is uh, when selecting the supplier side, it is showing two business units which are enabled uh, invoice functions. For the payment, it is coming only one business unit. So, disbursement bank account. Mm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then 109. So we didn't close. I think still we are getting the same error. If not, it will not take this much time. So I will check uh, why this error we are getting. Document payable failed because it's payment failed. Why the payment failed? That is the invoice option is selected. Payment method. Payment method we given check. This can be overridden at any point of time. There's no issue with this. Mm -hmm. At invoice level, if you're giving one payment method and uh, you can still make the payment uh, with another payment method, even it should allow us to do that. There are some issues still we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I will see this error today. I will do. I will search in MetaLink. What is the error? But uh, this is your shared service concept. I hope it is clear for everyone. It's nothing but you are selecting other business unit invoices, and you are making the payment from the business unit for which enable the payments business function. 
क्लियर ओके थैंक्स देन सो टुमारो वी विल प्लान फॉर पीपीआर एंड विद द लिंक टैक्स एंड सप्लाई मैनेज प्रोसेस दोस थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट्स विल ट्राई टू कंप्लीट इन आवर टुमारो सेशन फाइन सो इफ नो क्वेश्चंस देन कैन वी वाइंड अप द क्लास ओके आई मीन थैंक यू thanks and thank you bye and